In this video, we're going to discuss the problem-solving strategy, the systematic treatment of equilibrium, which consists of six steps that we can use to solve more complex equilibrium problems. The six steps are listed here. Um, you first write any pertinent chemical reactions. You'll write charge balance equations and any mass balance equations. Um, you'll collect your equilibrium constant expressions and then you'll check to make sure that you have enough equations to solve for the number of unknowns that you have. The reason why we might need the systematic treatment of equilibrium is sometimes um, when we use ice tables or some other strategies, we make some assumptions um, that don't take into account all of the other um, reactions that, that might be occurring. Um, so we assume there's a principal reaction and we kind of neglect everything else. But if we look at something like the pH of a dilute strong acid, um, so if I were to calculate this pH based on my strategies, I know if I just did the negative log of this concentration, I would get a pH of eight. And for a strong acid, I should not get a basic pH. And so I've made the assumption that I've made that the H plus here is only coming from the nitric acid is not a good assumption. And I need to take into account the other equilibria that are occurring in solution. And so we're gonna use the systematic treatment of equilibrium to calculate the pH of this dilute strong acid. And when we say dilute, again, we're in the order of magnitude here um, that we're getting close to what we would predict with the autoionization of water, so that 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so let's actually calculate the pH of um, a dilute strong acid and nitric acid here. So I'm going to first write my pertinent equations. So I have nitric acid in water, and that's going to form H3O plus and my nitrate ion. And as I mentioned before, since I have water, the other equilibrium I need to take into account is the autoionization of water, which will form H3O plus and OH minus anions. So these are my pertinent reactions, and now I can see all of the charged species that are present. And so I'm going to write a charge balance where I collect all my positives on the left and all my negatives on the right. Now, since I'm given a concentration, I'm gonna write a mass balance in terms of the nitrate. Since I know this is a strong acid and I know nitrate's not going to be um, in any other form, then I know that the concentration of nitrate is gonna be that 1.0 times 10 to the negative eight. And then finally, my equilibrium constant expression that I'm going to write out is my Kw. I'm not gonna write a Ka because for a strong acid, we don't normally write those. And again, just keeping in mind that I have these values. So now I have, um, in terms of equations and unknowns, I have two unknowns right now. I don't know my H3O plus and I don't know my OH minus. I have three equations um, that I can um, solve these in. And so the strategy here is I'm first going to, I'm basically going to plug everything back into my charge balance equation. So, and I'm going to solve in terms of H3O plus. So I'm just going to rearrange um, my uh, KW here real quick. So I can write OH minus in terms of H3O plus. And again, now I'm gonna plug this into my charge balance and I'm also gonna put my mass balance into my charge balance. And when I do that,
And then going to multiply everything through by H3 O plus, just to simplify. rearrange once more so that we can see that I'm actually in the form of a quadratic equation. And again, I know my kW value there. So here now I can solve um, the quadratic equation for the H3O plus concentration. And when I do that, get this value here, which when I take the negative log of that now gives me a acidic pH, a very slightly acidic pH, but one that, um, then follows that if I have a strong acid that I do end up having an acidic pH. And so in summary, you can use the systematic treatment of equilibrium to solve any equilibrium problem. Um, there are the six steps that you follow through and you're basically left with an algebra problem and then you can solve um, for, especially if you have more than one unknown that you're solving for.